स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया welcome everyone we are in the last lecture of module 7 that is lecture 5 and yes it was uh, mainly titled as damp proofing and insulation and here i have included composites and as you know composites is a combination of two or more materials so as you had seen insulators in the thermal insulators those were not single items but they were within a system they were applied within a system within a framing and then it was covered with something so that is why i thought of putting the composites in this particular section and we will discuss what are composites we have come across a number of composites by this time but it is just to re iterate that water composites its application in buildings it app its application in structural systems and again some nano material applications which are also added to items to make it better working fun better functional so we will come to the each of them so coming to water composites composites are engineered combination of materials that result in a finished material with better overall properties we had seen sand we had seen cement we have seen core segregate but when three of them in right proportions were mixed we called that as man made composite that was concrete so we had done that in one complete mod module when we had done glass fiber reinforced gypsum we have taken that as glass fibers inside gypsum laid so nicely that it gives strength etc etc so it is getting better overall properties and hence it is termed as composites at a microscopic level if you see each constituents remain distinct so there is no chemical reaction happening there is no reaction happening where sand cement all these things bound together with water made the gel and they could bind together all the materials but the materials did not change property so wood wood is a natural composite which grows naturally where the cellulose fibers are there in the lignin matrix so lignin is holding them together the cellulose fibers together to give it strength and when we talk of engineered wood there yes the natural wood is there but these small small pieces of wood are being or strands or veneers in case of plywood all are added using adhesive so adhesive becomes the binder and the fibers or the members or the pieces those are the wood pieces so that is uh, the engineered wood is a composite made man made whereas wood is naturally occurring composite so composites if we see very precisely or deeply we will see it has two phases the first is the matrix phase that is something which holds holds whom the reinforcement or the particles that make it that help to they help the reinforcements to become more tough more ductile so they provide lateral support so if there is a if there is a reinforcement it will be supported at certain points by help of the matrix now matrix may be a continuous 
matrix may be a continuous layer giving the support it may be intermittent support so actually the reinforcement may be covered on different sides with the matrix with the binder that is the matrix phase so these lateral supports to the fibers may be in the form of metals may be in the form of ceramics may be in the form of polymers in any form next we have the reinforcing phase that is or the fibers or the particulate matters in case of mdf boards it was wood fibers wood particles sorry wood particles so those are into the matrix so the reinforcing phase may be fibrous may be particulate matter or particles and they are strong dense light but bound by the matrix to give them that continuity and give them to behave as one unit so need based alternative materials can be obtained by changing the percentages of the matrix or the reinforcement you can get special characteristics and what will happen finally it becomes economical in the area where it is to be applied just giving the example mdf boards may be of three types like ld light density medium density high density so by applying different amounts of pressure giving different different amounts of particles in it you get different three different kinds of wood composite so now you and you understand what why i told initially that we have already learned many of the composites now coming to the applications of composites in building facades the as i told you get special properties so composites usually have low thermal expansion and they do not corrode or rot because we are taking that taking that we are going to improve property so we can go for external applications using composites we have seen precast slabs we discussed at length in precast items that particular module structurally integrated panels or sips which are having foam or eps or polyurethane sandwiched in between with a coating of maybe metal sheet or maybe oriented strand board or any other material which can withstand the external conditions you get structural integrated panel now what is the advantage of it these are getting thermal insulation at the same time light weight where do where do we apply them we can apply it where the structural system is there and you are using this sips as filler walls light weight gives the other clue makes the entire building load less so you can choose this for high rise buildings tall structures coming to the next one it is vacuum insulated panel here also a ga the gas between the two members is evacuated out when it is evacuated out the inside becomes vacuum hence it gives insulation it becomes air tight no air can enter it is vacuum and it is light in weight and can act as a external facade we have pultruded composite panel this is also similar where you are using resin coated glass fibers through a heat die so glass wool can be passed through resin so resin is the matrix and glass fiber is the reinforcement and you can give any desired shape 
you can get pipes you can get walls you can get obviously you can make facades you can make doors win door window frames with glass fiber reinforced reinforcement within the resin so the major important point or the shift from the other two is it can take any shape because the resin here is a thermoplast aluminum composite panels we have discussed this when we did metals non ferrous metals you can go back and see how it is made it has a very thin core of polyurethane foam and the facing and the backing that is the two layers which is supporting the polyurethane foam is aluminum that is light weight soft you can bend it give it any shape the epcot center was made of acp panels many a buildings you see the building in the picture you can see a circular kind of facade has been developed by using aluminum composite panel so we have gone through many of these materials earlier coming to other applications as i told you glass fibers as a reinforcement within plastic pipes sheets corrugated sheets as you see in the picture see the wood section here the window section frame which replaces wood which replaces aluminum which replaces steel have now come into use so it has reduced the use of metals it has brought in alternative material in use and it is giving better result than the others these are not getting corroded like iron these are quite rigid hard durable pipes made with fiber reinforced plastic for high rise buildings again because the water is coming from say 200 meters the pipe is facing that water regularly at a very high pressure its linings may get corroded the internal walls may get corroded but if it is made of fiber reinforced plastic there is no corrosion elevator cables they are made of fiber reinforced plastic so you can find out different applications within this building industry which have been gradually replaced by these composites here is again another picture of glass and aramid fibers together so here fiber is not one but two so this forms the matrix and it is in both the directions so when you put this within a matrix then it becomes a very hard material a durable material with very low conductivity and they neither corrode nor get affected by environmental at any kind of environmental hazards even at times they are fire resistant so many a good qualities can be achieved by using composites in place of our traditional or known building materials we come to another important aspect of using composites that is in the structural system how can we get benefit from composites in structural system here you see some pictures where black denotes the iron part or the metal part 
and the gray color is the concrete. It is not like regular reinforcements. You see here there is an I section, two I sections together. Here you see one I section. Here you see it is entirely a solid bar, square bar. Here you see it is an entirely solid core of iron. Here you see within the I section there are again further reinforcement bars and it is filled with concrete. Same in the other pictures. These are examples of composite columns. Here you come and see composite beams. So you see this I section is a beam, is the major beam which is running horizontally and onto which there are you see there are rods that is reinforcement and there is a connector between the two. So, the entire beam is not a simple concrete beam or neither a sim simple steel beam. Rather, it is having reinforced beams as well as an I section beam, steel section. Here also you see the slab is on the top that is projected on both the directions, but here is the I section which is behaving as a composite member. Coming to the picture below, here you see it is, it is a slab which is cast within a member which is the steel deck. So, the steel deck is nothing but a corrugated steel plate. Here you see the column is there which was repeated here. You can see this column here which is which has come here. So, onto this is placed accordingly this I section beam has been placed accordingly and the deck is resting on this I section beam. And what has been done? You cannot walk on such a floor. So, it has been filled with, it has been filled with concrete. So, the entire inside is concrete as you see marked here. So, you get a flat surface on top of which you can walk. But what is gained? you are not using re reinforcement at intervals, rather you have used a entire profile which is reduce the slab depth very drastically. So, what have you gained? You have gained that loss of depth due to the entire thick slab. What more have you gained? You have embedded you can embed these service lines what you see in the red shown in red or maybe black circles where through which the wires, the conduits, the water supply, the air conditioning lines all can pass through embedding them below the decked slab. What are you gaining again? You are gaining on height. So, if you can save height in each floor, you will finally gain a floor maybe. When can that happen? When there are multiple floors that is when it is high rise. Let us come to the major points. We can get larger spans using such kind of beam column system. So, that means you will get uninterrupted space. We need uninterrupted space where say auditorium, say office, say multi multipurpose spaces, sports arena where we can go for longer spans. We need thinner slabs through use of steel decks the deck itself provides a shuttering to the concrete which is being added on top of it to give it a 
smooth floor. Obviously, you get benefit on height and hence it becomes economical. Coming to the columns, the columns become much slender. That means you don't, you can avoid heavy columns. That means dimension of say 1 meter by 1 meter reduces to say 500 cross 500. So that becomes the space saving. Your one fourth of the space is required than a conventional column beam structure. You get more design opportunities because you are getting much of uninterrupted space. So you can play with space, lesser weight because you are gaining, you are reducing height, you are using maybe some composite panels for the walls. So finally, it is reducing the weight. You do not have to wait for 28 days because of curing etc. because it is already cast on a shuttering. So further construction work can, can be carried on. So you get speedier construction. Shuttering is not required as I have already mentioned. Services can be accommodated below the steel deck. And mostly we find applications of these in high rise buildings. So I hope you could get through that the application of composites in structural systems which you will see more in high rise building application, tall building application, you will see these kind of composites being applied. But Another group of composites are also there or applications as a coating is there which we also came across when we did glass. We had self cleaning glass which had a coating of titanium oxide which helped it to clean or clear the glass time to time by the application of water or application of sun sunlight and had kept the facade clean. That was a nano application. Nano materials can also go into composites, carbon fibers can go into concrete to improve its characteristics. Silicon dioxide, nano silica improves durability of concrete. Copper nanotubes in steel helps to control the cracking. I am not going into details. Vanadium molybdenum, they improve the strength of steel. They are only applied a very thin layer. Lignocellulose of wood, we had learnt lignin and cellulose. So, lignocellulose of wood is nanofiber of 1 to 100 nanometers used to reinforce concrete. So, you can understand that nano at nano level that is 1 billionth of a meter. Also these materials can improve properties. We had seen wired glass, wire was embedded within glass to give it special characteristics. That is also a composite these are also composites. See application of carbon nanotubes and polypropylene gives fire resistance to concrete. So there are so many benefits of, of building up composites and yes we are having a shift in building materials. Yes we cannot do it in one day. It will take a longer time, but we need to open up towards these materials also. A lot of research is being done. 
you can get use titanium oxide nano coating to get efficient solar collection because titanium oxide is not allowing the dust to fall on it. So obviously your solar collector collectors is remaining better, cleaner. So efficiency is going high of the photovoltaic cells. So there can be very intelligent applications of these nanomaterials also in composites. So with these, I would like to end this module and here are two other references from where I had taken these materials other than the books which I had referred earlier in my initial lectures. So thank you.